So I just got back from Northern California for Valley Visionaries Tour, and I'm gonna fill you in on that right after this. So my partner in crime, Sundish Patel, and I took a couple industry leaders down to meet with the VCs. We met with Lightspeed Venture Partners, Greylock, Sutter Hill, Sequoia, IVP. And we even managed to fit in a meeting with Diraj Pandey, the CEO of Nutanix. I love these trips because it gives us so much inside information about these companies. So many of these people at the venture capital firms are on the boards of a lot of different companies and they get a chance to talk to a lot of different people and get a lot of information on uh, what's happening in the state of technology. So cloud is still top of mind for a lot of folks. The thing that's really interesting that we had a lot of conversations about was the explosion of SaaS companies. In fact, almost every company we've talked to in the Valley recently has been a SaaS company of one kind or another. And it seems like most of these SaaS companies are starting off on AWS because of the maturity of the platform, but are branching off quickly to Azure, and they're also deploying on GCP. So all these companies were talking about multi-cloud, they see the commoditization of cloud coming, and the feeling is that by being multi-cloud capable, they'll be able to take advantage of some of these cost savings. That said, there was an interesting perspective on the different cloud providers. Now, AWS is considered uh, to be the most mature platform, the most comprehensive platform at this point. The sentiment was that AWS is a very hard company to work with and that they don't partner well. It's one of those love-hate relationships a lot of these companies have with AWS. They feel AWS has a great product, but it's very frustrating to work with a company is what I generally hear. The other thing that's really interesting and we see this in our customer base as well, is that enterprises are really looking towards Azure. Microsoft really knows how to address the enterprise market and it's paying off for them because there's a big uptick in spend in Azure. People still like Google, but there's a huge trail of dead products behind Google. And so I think a lot of people are gun shy around Google and that's something they've got to fix. Recently, Thomas Kurian, who was previously heading up Oracle's cloud development has now moved over to Google to run Google's cloud efforts. Many of us have thought, wow, that's kind of a strange choice for this because the Oracle cloud offering wasn't that successful. But the word on the street I'm hearing is that the Oracle cloud effort was really driven hard by Larry Ellison and that Thomas Kurian was looking to do something different. So now that he's coming over to Google, he's gonna get that chance. Now the question about Thomas Kurian is, this is a guy who's done a lot in his career and does he need to go to Google and herd all those cats? And does he have the energy to do that? And I'll tell you, across the board, the VCs out there who knew him and know him, they feel that he's got tons of energy, He's really motivated to make this thing go and he can really turn this ship around. Now the challenge is there's a lot of stuff that's outside of his control that he may have to wrangle in at some point. But the word on the street is that there's a lot of confidence in this guy and we'll see what he can do. Another interesting bit of gossip that I heard was that um, Bill Gates is still very involved over at Microsoft, that he's an absolute workaholic. His wife is very committed to spending time with their charitable endeavors, but Bill Gates is a complete workaholic who is spending a lot of time at Microsoft and particularly around trying to improve Azure and bring new products to market. If I had his kind of money, I think I might just retire to an island. One other thing that I will say about uh, the venture firms is that they have a lot of interesting information and I wish I could share all of it with you, but 
Unfortunately, a lot of it is not ready for consumption yet. There's a lot of stealth investments, a lot of stealth companies, a lot of companies that they're thinking about investing in that they haven't even invested in. When we talk to companies like Sutter Hill, which has a track record of incubating companies and starting companies, they've got a lot of cool stuff brewing in that, uh, in that office. And I can't wait to be able to talk about some of those things because there's some really cool stuff coming up. I also want to talk about some of the startups. There were a lot Lot of really interesting startup companies that I talk to that have really incredibly interesting technologies, but I'm going to save that for the next video and I'm going to wrap this one up and I will see you in the next video.